All right, a new set of slides and a new topic to discuss. We're going to talk about synchronization and fading in this sequence of videos. Basically, in the class so far, when we've been talking about digital communication, we've made some assumptions. And the assumptions are that at the receiver, most of the time, we have access to what we call a coherent reference. So we, have, we know the phase of the uh, cosine that was modulating our original signal. And we're also synchronized in time in terms of where the symbols start and stop. So that was some big assumptions there that we had those available. The other thing we've been assuming throughout the class is that all the noise present was additive light Gaussian noise. So that is usually a type of noise that's present, but there are also other interference sources and things that can happen to the channel. One of those is what we call fading. So talking about fading and the applicability of that in kind of a wireless communication channel is something that we want to mention as well. All right, so let's just introduce first, we're gonna talk about synchronization. And as I noted, most of the time in this class so far, we've been assuming that certain things are available at the receiver. For instance, we've assumed that we have what we call a coherent reference, meaning I know the frequency and phase of the uh, reference perfectly. So my theta matches the theta of the transmitter perfectly and the frequency that I have at my receiver matches the frequency at the transmitter perfectly. Another thing that we've assumed during all of our analysis is that we know exactly when symbols start. So in all the math that we've done so far, we always start at time zero and we do stuff until time capital T and we know exactly where time zero is kind of in the world, so to speak. Well, that doesn't happen for free. You have to, in a real system, kind of estimate where you think the symbols are starting. So how do we go about getting what we call symbol synchronization. Also, in practice in most digital communication systems, data is packed into larger structures that we call frames of data. So you might have kind of large frames of data where the first few bits might be, you know, addresses of where the data is going or some type of header. And then there's actually a payload of real data bits that you're trying to extract. So not only do you have to know where symbols start in time, but you also have to do something called frame synchronization to make sure that you are able to track where frames start and stop. So lots of different things that you have to keep track of in a digital communication system. And most of these right here, we've assumed that we've taken care of um, in the class so far. Looking really at any of these, you could spend almost whole classes. I mean, there's tons of algorithms and different approaches for doing this for specific schemes. So tons of algorithms that we could look at. No way that we can look at them all. Really our goal here is to look at just a few examples to get kind of just um, a, a taste of ways that you could go about doing some of these different things in terms of coherent synchronization with the reference, symbol synchronization with symbols, and frame synchronization with frames of data. So the first one that we're gonna look at in the next video, we're gonna first look at carrier synchronization and the goal here is, given that I have some input that has a phase theta, how do I generate in my system an estimate of theta that we'll call theta hat so I can use a coherent reference? So this block right here is a way of generating a coherent reference. It's called a phase lock loop, and we will analyze how this works in the next video.